Okay, so if you're tuning in, chances are you've probably chuckled along with Terry Gar at some point, right? I mean, who hasn't? Yeah. Her recent passing was definitely a loss. You know, she was 79. But today, we're not here to mourn. No. We're going to celebrate her life. Absolutely. Celebrate her career mm -hmm. and really dive into what made Terry Gar so unique, so iconic. It's a deep dive, folks. It really is. Into the talent, the journey, and just this incredible resilience. You know, it's interesting because her career really kind of captures this golden age of Hollywood comedy. You're talking like the 70s and 80s. Exactly. Yeah, where it just yeah. felt like the creativity was boundless. Oh, yeah. It was like a different world back then. Yeah. And her start is like almost too perfect for Hollywood, right? Huh. Born in L.A. in 44. Showbiz right in her blood. Show business in her DNA. Her dad was a vaudeville performer. And her mom. Radio actress, a dancer. A dancer. I mean, talk about setting the stage. That's not your average childhood. Not at all. And I think that early dance training is really key to understanding her later comedic brilliance. Right. You don't see it as often today, but there's this physicality. The energy. Yeah. It's electric. Think of young Frankenstein where she's Inga, the lab assistant. Oh, come on. Werewolf. <laughs> their wolf. Their castle. Comedic gold. Pure gold. It's not just the lines. It's the delivery. It's the wide-eyed delivery. It's the physical comedy. It's how she contrasts with, like, the whole tone of the film. It's pure gar. You know, just adding this layer of, like, chaotic energy to every scene. And she owns it. She totally does. That kind of quirky, slightly offbeat persona, it's her signature. It really is. It's why she was such a hit on the talk shows, especially mm -hmm. with hosts like, you know, Johnny Carson, David Letterman. Oh, the kings of quick wit. Exactly. They loved her. Because she could keep up. Those appearances were legendary. Yeah. Always ready with a quip. That's like a master class improv. It really is. Speaking of comedic chemistry, we got to talk Tootsie. Oh. Now, for those who haven't seen it, Dustin Hoffman plays this actor who disguises himself as a woman to get a role. Classic. And Gar plays his friend, Sandy. Who is completely oblivious. Completely oblivious to his true identity. I mean, the comedic potential there is explosive. Oh, it's brilliant. Tootsie was pivotal, not just for the Oscar nomination. Which she totally deserved. She did, but because of the complexity of the role, this wasn't just, you know, hitting punchlines. She had to portray this genuine confusion. Yeah, this growing friendship with Dorothy. Well, the audience is in on the joke. The whole time. Layers upon layers of comedy. Executed flawlessly. Perfectly. She was also, you know, not afraid to touch on social commentary through humor. Like in Mr. Mom, she plays this wife who goes back to work, her husband stays home. Role reversal. Hilarious, yes, but it reflected, you know, what was happening. The changing dynamics of American families? Yeah, in the 80s. It makes you wonder, though, right? What is it about certain comedic performances that just resonate, you know? Decades later. Why are we still laughing? Why are those moments still so funny? Why do they hold up? Yeah. With Gar, I think it's the warmth. She's funny, but she's never mean. It's never at someone else's expense. Exactly. We always root for her characters. Even when they're creating chaos. Oh, absolutely. But she wasn't just a comedic force, right? Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, come on, Spielberg. A classic. And she holds her own in this dramatic role. It shows her range. Totally. Her versatility. It wasn't just about the joke, you know. She understood character. She understood emotion. She could bring that depth even to her comedic roles. Right. And then life, as it often does, throws her a curveball. Yeah. Late 90s, she's diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. It affects the central nervous system. Yeah. But true to form. She didn't let it define her. She kept going. Kept working, became an advocate. For MS awareness. And wrote about her experiences with wit and honesty. In her memoir, Speed Bumps, Flooring It Through Hollywood. I mean, even the title, right? It's perfect. Humor as a shield. But also a way to connect with others. Absolutely. And there's this quote from Larry King. I love this. She said, if there's something I can't do, I do something I can. Wow. She never lost her voice. Or her sense of humor. So inspiring. It really is. And, you know, while we mourn her passing, her daughter, Molly O'Neill, is keeping that legacy alive. Yes, yeah, she is. And I think for the rest of us, the best way to honor Terry Garr. Watch our movies. Revisit her work. Share it. Share it with new audiences. Let those laughs continue. You know. Keep them going. We've explored some iconic roles today, but her filmography. Extensive. It's vast. It is. So here's something for you to think about. What is it about her comedic style that still resonates today? Why do some performances just stand the test of time? Dive into her work. 
explore those films, see what answers you find. Yeah, you might surprise yourself. You really might. You really, really might. <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, folks, thanks for tuning in to this deep dive into the life and career of the one and only Terry Gar. Terry Gar. <laughs>